Hello and welcome to another video from In3D Software. Today we're going to look at IX2021, the plan version of the software. This is a simplified stripped down version of IX CAD, which is a great tool for space planning and quickly creating room environments. It uses a configurator built on the data that you would use within IX CAD, so it means that users can quickly make customizations to standard catalogs very quickly and easily. I'll create a room and uh, we'll create some outputs so you can see the process and how quick and easy it is to create, in this case, uh, an open plan, open plan living room. And uh, we'll see what else we can create as well at the same time. So on the screen here, you can see IX plan. It looks a little bit different to CAD. Um, we have a simplified menu down the left hand side and I've actually split my workspace into two zones here. I've got a 3D zone over here which I can change to be plan if I want to and then I've got a plan which I can change to be 3D. It allows me to see the same thing in different views so it stops me having to orbit around quite so much and flip between the views. This is all customizable of course so you can set it up however you like. So um, one of the benefits of IX software is that it's using Autodesk technology, so it's built on top of uh, an AutoCAD platform which allows us to use uh, industry standard DWGs as a jumping off point. So what I'll do is use the command open here to open up a drawing that's been provided of a uh, small residential building. So what I'll do is take away all of the information that we don't need here all the externals and gardens and whatnot. And we'll just focus on the actual ground floor. And I'll copy this now into my main drawing. So you can see it here now. And what I'll do is move this into my zero, zero point. And then what I'll do is use the room tools to create a 3D environment. So over on the plan view over here, I can zoom right out and we can have a look at it in plan at all times. Okay, so let's create this sort of open plan living area here. We have room plan tools, which will open up on this side. And I'll just click on this create room button, which will quickly create a, a room. And I'm not gonna worry too much about the architectural accuracy of this. I'm just gonna give it a, a quick uh, demonstration of how we can move these walls around and snap them into place. So in this case, I'll move in plan this wall back. And let's move it over a little bit to make the room about the right size. There we go. And then we need some windows down here on the, uh, on the side. And I think we've got some doors, yep, down here in this corner as well. There's some columns and bits and pieces in here as well. So back over to the uh, 3D view, what I can do in this case is bring in my windows. So let's bring in a standard looking window of some sort. And you can see in here, it will orientate itself to the wall that I want to put it onto. And I'll um, move it along in here. Let's see what it looks like in plan and it's about here we don't need to get too accurate i don't think and it's probably a little bit smaller as well so let's just select that and look at the properties down here and i can change the width to be about 900 that's about right and then we have as well uh, another window and i'm just going to make that up to about a meter let's say and I'll copy that along here, one meter. So I've now got two windows and now I need my sort of larger opening windows down here, which are more like a, a patio doors, I guess, or something like that. So what I'll do is I'll come over to this side and choose something a bit more like this and drop it in. And I'll say the overall height of this is a lot higher Let's say that this here is to 500 and it's 100 off the floor. So 
so A2300. There we go, that's a bit better. And the width of this thing is more like 1800 because it's a double door. That's about right. And we'll just say that this should be close up to the corner. Oh, actually, I think it comes in a little bit if we take a peek in behind here. That's a bit further in. So I'll just come into here, grab it, and move. And you can see it update on the plan as well at the same time. Okay, that looks about right. So the next thing now is to bring in some furniture. So looking at my plan over here, I think I can get rid of this now because I've, I know that I've got the table down here and I've got some doors which I need to put in. So let's do that quickly actually. I'll just orbit around here and I need two doors. So back over to the room plan, let's scroll up and you can see the doors that we provide. And I'll go for these sort of three panel doors and these are quite large in here, they're too big. So let's come in and change those down to 900. And again, let's just move those along to about there. And then I need another one a bit further down here to go into this uh, downstairs cloakroom. Let's flip the swing on this, so my door's opening the other way. That looks about right. Okay, so back into 3D. Let's orbit back over into this corner where our kitchen's gonna be. And on the plan, I'll just zoom out as well a little bit. So uh, the architect in here has given us dishwasher, sinks, three drawers, three drawers. We have a wall unit here as well, and uh, some sort of gas hob. Uh, and it comes around in a bit of a U-bend with um, sort of uh, some seats here, I guess, to form an island. And then we've got some tall storage and a fridge. Got no mention of an oven. Maybe that might be below. We'll make it up as we go along. So over here, let's uh, switch from the plan into the 3D again. And the first thing I'm going to do is open up my configuration. And in here, this will bring through the catalogs that we supply with the software. So you can see in here, we've got some office furniture, bedrooms, and we've got some kitchen furniture in here as well. I'm going to open up the uh, 2021 kitchen global settings and this will open up now a specification dialog box so I can specify how I want my kitchen to work out in here and this is all customizable based on the data that you would create within the system because of course this is just the stock data that arrives with the software and would need to be customized by yourself so if you were a kitchen manufacturer you would make your own kitchens and so on um, and you may make your data similar to this you may have more information or less you may have different uh, suppliers of materials or finishes or doors and you may have different suppliers of hardware and fittings but in this example let's come in and say for example that we want one shelf that's 20 millimeters setback from our base unit and two on our tall and we'll stick with the 150 millimeter legs but we'll increase our weight rating on our cabinet backs for our wall units. Let's go to the fronts and I think what we'll do here is go for a bit of a matte oak uh, in 18 millimeter but we will change to a horizontal grain and the same in here for my panels. So in here got my main carcass I'll go for a matte white in 18 millimeter as well and in here I've got my draw materials so I'll go for a sort of a darker gray 18 millimeter for my tall carcasses and again this is all customizable so you don't have to have this level of configuration if you don't want to it's totally up to you in here my wall materials I think what we'll do is go for again 18 mil material matte white and then my panels I want them to match my doors so I'll go for a 25 millimeter oak that has a horizontal grain on this and then my filler materials again let's go for the 18 millimeter white I think handles let's go for something a little bit more modern a little finger pull style tab and again you would be customizing these to have all your different handle options in here. 
once I've made those specifications, I can save them for later if I want to repeat that style or that configuration and load them back in. But for now, I'll just click apply. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is come over to the kitchen and search for my corner. So I know that my code for my product is a base one door corner. Ooh. Base one door corner. So that's gonna bring up all of my corner products in here. And if I hover over them, it's gonna give me a little bit of information and a picture in here. So what I want is my 1100 product here. And I'm just gonna drop and click onto this and you can see in here I've got my configuration in here ready to go oh this is on beach we need to just double check on that setting there we go we wanted that on oak didn't we that's right okay so here's my 1100 and you can see in here now I've got my live preview of my product and I can make a configuration of this in here. So if I wanted to customize it for any reason, perhaps I wanted to change the construction method or the quantity of shelves or in here, I wanted to change the styles or anything, I can actually do that on a article or cabinet by cabinet basis. But for now, I'll just click add and I'll drop this in. You can see that it'll take the 3D model and it will orientate it to the wall that I'm actually placing it on. And I'll just drop this into place. So by default, it's brought through this uh, sort of concrete style uh, work surface and my plinth for me. And for now, I'll just leave these as they are and customize them a little bit later on. Next thing then is uh, I might put in, because I've got a bit of a gap here, a uh, shelf unit. So in here, I have base units with shelves and I'll just open this one up and rather than having it as my carcass material i'll make this out of my wood grain and i'll find my oak change my graining in here have that horizontal as well and then click add to basket and you can see at this point i can place the cabinet on either side and if i wanted to i could be doing this in plan view as well over here so i can come in and say that it should be on the right hand side or on the left hand side and it's now updated so here's my, my product and I now need my sink. So what I'll do is I'll get my uh, sink unit and I'll go for a double door. Here's my double door sink unit. I need to change that. Let's make that a meter wide. And in here, let's choose the type of sink. So I'll go for this Blanco style undermount one in here and click add to the basket. Again, just put this up tight and I'll just click okay, bring this through. And then the next thing that I want to do is put in another return and then put my dishwasher in here. So let's bring in another corner unit. And this time I want an 1100, but hung the other way. So you can see it's brought through my fillers for me as well and it's swept my worktop around. I now need a dishwasher. So I can just search in here for dish and it's brought through my two types of integrated dishwasher panels. I'll go for the full one, drop that down. Uh, and then on the end here, I've not got much space. If I uh, come over here into my plan and have a look, I'm kind of running out a gap here. It's kind of hard to see on my floor, but let's uh, drop in a three drawer. So I'll go for a base three drawer. Here's my product. And again, if I know the size of the product, I'll say that this should be 450 millimeters and click add to basket. And then in here, I want that to flip around and drop that down. Okay. And I'll need my, uh, my appliance over on this side. So I think what we'll do is we've got quite a lot of tall storage here. So we'll have a fridge and oven and some tall storage over here as well. Uh, so let's go in here for a cooker. And again, your codes would differ, I'm sure. But I'm going to choose this one in here as a 900 wide one. Here's my live update of my options. So I'll choose 900 wide. And in here, let's go for gas. And I think this melee hob uh, hood 
here would do. Let's just have a little look at what that looks like. Yeah, this is good. Let's click add and drop this into place. And then in here, next thing is we've got another three draw uh, wall unit. So with that in mind, I can then just right click and say copy article and drop this onto this side. Now, before I drop this down, I need to make it a little bit bigger, but what I can do is stretch that by pressing S for stretch. And this will then allow me to stretch this product and make it a little bit wider. So what I'll do is say that the overall size of this is back to being 600 wide. And then I can just let that fill out that size. And then we have a bit of a column in here, which I didn't put in from the room. So let's make sure that we've got that in there. Let's do a quick DI command for distance and measure that, which is 250 mil square. So let's put a column into the room. Let's go back to the room plan tools. And we have a column in here. So we need to make sure that that's looking around the same sort of finish as the rest of our walls. There we go. And then we can move that into position. Uh, next thing is we're going to need some sort of filler panel in here, no doubt that's going to pull this all the way across. Or perhaps we can make something that's going to just make that a little bit um, wider here. And we can use... Uh, um, the stretch article to make it a bit smaller. So let's pull in here, for example, the configuration, and we'll pull in perhaps uh, another base unit in here, but for more wine. This might just make it a little bit too shallow. Let's just measure. Not too sure how deep a wine bottle is. Uh, we've only got in here not very far oh actually it's not too bad when we look at it in 3d 300 millimeters that's not too bad let's choose this product and in here we've got our custom width in here and our depth so let's say that this is 300 on our depth and again the material we're going to change to be a wood grain oak mat horizontal let's just drop this into position that looks a bit better and I think we need to come a little bit wider in here or we could uh, obviously make a three a three bay version if need be but what I'll do is I'll just stretch this product and in here I can even snap it to the intersection here so that it is a totally bespoke unit that's been placed in here. Okay, so now we need a uh, a tall tall unit of some sort to go in here. It's saying a tall fridge, but I think the oven would probably fit better here, and we'll put the fridge a bit further down with some storage in the middle. So let's go to the tall products. Let's find in here first a vertical panel. So we've got in here vertical and we'll choose this one here click plus and we'll just drop this into position and I'm not sure I like the way the grains going horizontally on this tall one but uh, that's just my personal preference in here we can change that of course by modifying the product and then in here saying that that should be vertical Okay, yeah, that's not too bad. And let's find a tall oven unit. So here we have tall and we want a oven unit in here. Next thing I want to do is specify my appliances, but I quite like the melee range in here that we have. We could change it to be Gaganau, I guess. Okay. And we'll specify some lighting as well. And we 
we can just drop this into place. And then the next thing that we want is some tall storage. So let's just go in here and we'll run these drawers along, I think. So if we go in here for a tall three draw, and again, let's just specify in here what our lights should be. And then we need our fridge in here that's opening up. So this might be like a dual fridge for easy either side, I guess. Um, let's bring in one in here. And we'll change the hand in on these so that they're coming the other way. Right hand hung. And again, let's specify those lights. Okay, that doesn't leave as much space in here for a filler, but that's okay. So we need, I think a wall unit was mentioned up here, but that looks like a bit of a terrible place really. I think the architects got that wrong. Let's put a corner unit in here instead. So if we do a wall one, uh, sorry, two door, we've got a two door corner unit in here. And again, I'm just gonna specify that this should have some lights. Under counter lights, I think. And we'll just drop this into position. And we need some end panels on here, but I might just get away with squeezing a little one door unit into there. So let's get that changed out for a wall one door. And again, we can specify the same style lights. And should this be left hand hung or right hand hung? Let's go for a right hand hung on this, see how it looks. Okay, it's definitely too wide. Um, but rather than modifying, let's use the stretch command again to kind of just nib that in a little bit there and make sure that it doesn't clash with my appliance. And I need an end panel on this so I can say actually come in here and uh, with a difference minus, let's say, 45 millimeters off this because this is going to be a custom unit again. Okay. I can then in here put my end panels on here. So let's do my vertical panel vertical panel and in here I've got my 900 and again should these be horizontal or vertical grain I think it looks nice if it's running around on this one running all the way around let's copy it across okay and then what else do we need in here we need uh, just to maybe move those edges down a little bit so let's select those edges. And then in here, let's move and we'll move those down minus 22 mil. That looks about right. And we just need to move that one over definitely because that's too thin. see we've got fine control over all aspects of the design that looks about right so what else do we need maybe a backsplash in here uh, well while we're doing the vertical panels let's do the rest of the island in here so we have a panel in here that we want on the end so I can say that this should align itself on this side and that looks a bit better now. And I want to then stretch this all the way along and then stretch it back 
with a difference of minus 22 millimeters here because we have it artificially increasing so that it uh, lines through with the doors. We'll put it onto this side as well and you'll see what I mean. Again, let's stretch this and say that overall this should be 900. So yeah, let's zoom out on our plan and make sure we have this looking okay. And if need be, I can always view this in a different way as well. So let's switch this into wireframe so that we can see all of the various parts of the design. Let's just get rid of those red sections in there. Okay, this isn't looking too bad. Uh, yes, we need our coffee table or dining table down here, but let's focus on uh, finishing off the design first. So we need over here, if we zoom out, our upstand running all the way around. So let's put our upstand lining through with uh, this in here as a niche. Okay, here we go. Niche panel in melamine and in here we can specify materials and things again you would be customizing this to your specific requirements so this may be stone or solid surface it could be any type of quartz or whatever your worktops are made out of so in here let's just specify a shorter length to begin with and here it is and I can now move this product and put it into position and then say stretch all the way across and again get that intersection point and then I'm going to need another one of these so I can copy that onto the other wall that looks about right um, and then would we have it running around here I don't know I'm not quite sure how we would tackle that okay so we need to sort out our worktop now so let's modify that and in here let's change that and beef this up a little bit and make it out of 38 millimeter material so that's looking a little bit more chunky and a little nicer um, but it's not got our cutout for our sink which is no good and it won't have our cutout for our hob either so we need to address that what we can do in here is we can say that we should select a part in this case the worktop and down here under some of the options what I can say is select a split line so in here now I can decide where I want to chop my worktop up so to speak and I'm going to choose this line here and have it run through and then in here I've got options on how I want these to be split so I'm going to choose here a right oh this is not good I need a left that's a bit better and I'll choose this line as well I think on the other one so let's just do that process again select my part and then in here choose my split line and again I'm going to choose this one I'm going to have that rotate the other way this time so I'll go to right and that looks a bit better let's confirm that choice I still don't have my cut uh, my cut through for my sink though so we'll need to definitely address that but what we'll do is we'll wait until the very end and we'll increase our level of detail and that will all be automatically applied once we get to that point. So um, the next thing is to bring in some appliances um, and some decoration items. So if we come into here, what I can do is minimize all of this now. And instead of looking at products that you would create or manufacture with your um, various machines that we would have the CNC information for. We'll look at 
decoration and installation items. So in here under decoration, let's choose kitchen and we need a coffee machine for sure. So let's stick one of those in the corner and maybe a radio to go alongside it. Probably also need some smaller plants. And this can be quite useful to kind of make the environment feel a little bit more lived in so that when we show our prospective customers they get a feel for the environment. Uh, let's put in some bar stills in here as well and I'm just going to rotate this about uh, this point here. There we go. And then I want to copy this product across because I'm going to need a couple of these. leaving me a bit tight on my six person dining table here. I think this might be a little bit small. So what we'll do is we'll put in our dining table as well. I think we have one of those here. So again, all of this information is supplied with the software. Let's just bring in a two seater, I think. Something like this. There we go. That's looking a bit better. So um, now we also want a couple of other things in here as well. So uh, let's come into our interior items. We've got various chairs. Let's get some decoration, maybe a classic EMOS mug is required and some ingredients to go with our coffee machine over here okay let's not get carried away so we're not looking too bad in here now I think the next stage is to look at creating a rendered visualization of this so let's finally delete our CAD plan that's been supplied to us and uh, create some further information from this. So I'll get rid of my catalog over here and give myself a little bit more space. And I'm gonna move this right over so that I'm not looking at the plan so much. Let's come into a 3D view that is set in perspective. And I'll zoom right in here so that I'm inside the room. You can see it's brought through the ceiling detail in here. This is looking not too bad. Let's zoom in a bit more. And what I'm going to do now is create a view. So I can now create my camera. So this is called camera one. And I'm just gonna click okay on that. And what I want to also do is edit some of these lights in here because right now these red spheres indicate where my ceiling lights are. So if I now come in and use the command light list, it will bring through a series of lights that I can edit. And I'm going to say that these shouldn't be so bright, but let's choose from some realistic looking lights. And in here say that these should be a little bit lower down maybe a little bit warmer as well let's go for a halogen style bulb okay that's our lights done but let's look at our environments as well so over here I have my adjust exposure and what I can do is increase uh, my lighting and have some external lighting images come in so I'll choose my background in here and I might make it a little bit brighter and a little bit warmer. And then all I need to do is click on my render button. Oh, so yeah, uh, we should probably make our plinth um, before we do the render the same color as well, right? So let's just modify that and just select the plinth. And in here we'll choose that to be the oak as well. 
and then we'll need to do this other piece down here as well so let's modify that smaller section um, good job I spotted that okay so now that we've got our, our kitchen how we like it um, let's try again on the render with all of the materials correct um, so here we just double click and here's the window it should bring up the here we go the progress bar down at the bottom it's picking up now our plinth is now correct uh, and in here we are nearly finished yeah so about 25 seconds to generate this render now of course we can also increase the quality if we want to because if we was to zoom in we'd see it's quite pixelated in certain areas so let's just try a really high quality render because this one in here I think is 1080 uh, resolution so let's close that down and we can use the command render presets and in here now we have the option to really beef up our resolutions and we'll go for something more akin to uh, A3 size paper and we'll say that the quality on that should be medium quality let's run the render on this one and this will take a little bit longer but you can see whereas before I was at 100% um, I'm still only at 50% resolution so now when we zoom in into this level of detail we're going to get a lot more information come through on the render Now, the important thing to remember as this is rendering away is once presented, um, the customer is going to have a very clear idea of just exactly how everything's going to look once it's been delivered. So, the grain direction, the fact that this product in here uh, has a white back, maybe that's something that they'd want to change, or you know, maybe this should be a two pan draw instead of a three. All of these things that would be discussed with the customer are revisions that you would need to undertake to update the revision um, and update the visualization. Now, the good thing about EMOS is because this is the production information, any changes that you update uh, to satisfy the visualization, you're also updating all of the production and costing information in the background at the same time. So, cutting lists, bills of materials, um, picking lists, uh, the CNC drilling information for one or more CNC's, all of the costing information, so the quotation may change. Uh, all of this is assigned to the same data all the way through the process. So it makes having all of the information in one, one unified package a lot more powerful, especially when it comes to revisions. So, as I've said, this one's taken a little bit longer. We're up to about two and a half minutes already in here. So you can see the quality of this is a lot better for when we now zoom in. So, we can save this in a second and we'll save the drawing as well because we want to create, create an order for this. finished. I'll save this on my desktop.
So here's the finished render now. It's looking pretty good. Now of course I can change lighting settings and materials and finishes. And if the customer wants some different proposals or maybe some different designs, we can also do that as well. So you can see here, I've created a different design with a handleless finger pull style. And I've changed the carcass material, worktop materials, appliances. It's the same layout, but of course this could also change as well. So a third option can also be created, whereby we change the style again. This time it's a painted finish, but again, it's a different door style, so we have a shaker style. Now, of course, this is all subject to your data. So you could create framed doors, in-frame doors, lay-on doors, inset doors, different types of handles, different types of paint finish. Okay, so with the renders complete, the next stage is to look at some outputs and one of the features that we can do is create a VR link. So I'll create that now. And save it on my desktop. Okay, so after this, we just want to now look at the um, documentation. So let's create some technical drawings. So what I'll do now is just switch over to the plan view, just on its own. So let's get rid of that and maximize this view. And we'll go into a plan. And then what we'll also do is increase our level of detail here so that we'll bring through all of our fittings and hardware as well. So you can see in here now we've got plenty of uh, detail for all of the hardware and fittings that we use for the construction and all of these pieces of items have their own individual purchase IDs for the suppliers and they also have all of the information for the machining of these parts as well. So let's create some technical drawings and the easiest way to do that is to come up to the drawing views button up here and just click on this button. So you can see in here now I have my plans and elevations created for me and automatically dimensioned and of course because this is using the AutoCAD engine, we can add in our own dimensions wherever we need to by using tools straight from Autodesk. So earlier on I created another export which was the VR link. So I'm just going to switch over now to a separate piece of software supplied by a company called Twinmotion. So let's load this up and in here you can add in different lights and uh, decorative items and these are all fantastic resources for making this feel like a real livable experience. So the next step is to move into VR which is going to be a little tricky to show you because obviously I'm recording my screen. So you can see now that I'm wearing the VR headset, it's an Oculus Quest 2 from uh, Meta, linked to Twinmotion, and I have the handsets that allow me to teleport around the space, but I can look around and walk about freely as well if need be. Now the nice thing about Twinmotion is that it allows you to customise the space, you can change materials, the time of day, lighting conditions and even the weather. You can also populate the space with objects that you can interact with as well and you can set this up very quickly. As you can see we've been creating this design now for around about 45 minutes and 
I've gone from a totally bespoke design that's production ready to a virtual reality presentation. So let's uh, move back over to the cooker and then we'll, I think, go back to IX plan. So as you can see, we are now back in uh, IX plan. And uh, at this point, we'll have presented the design to the end user and we can use VR, as you've seen, the renders that we've created in the uh, internal rendering engine and the technical drawings. And at this point now, I want to produce a sales quotation for the uh, for the end user because they're happy with the design. So what I'm going to do is save the, the uh, save the design. I'm going to come up here and click on the save button, and I'm going to give it a name. So I'll call this um, Mrs. Smith Kitchen. And at this point, I can do a number of things. I'm going to use document manager here to create a preview of each of the items uh, which will come in handy later and I'm going to fill out some information Okay, this will do. I can also in here add in information if need be. So I'll save the job and this will run Document Manager. And of course, you'll have noticed that at that point I could open this in IX CAD and using the CAD module, I can produce more information as well. I can produce the um, technical information for the factory in the form of CNC files and uh, a link to an optimization package if need be. So while uh, Document Manager is running, I'll just open up Organizer. And in here you can see that I have uh, the order manager category and here is our kitchen and it's already been priced for us so just under 13 and a half thousand pounds which is um, quite a bargain I'd say so myself let's open up we can see in here we have a list with a description of all of the items each one's costed out you can see in here if need be I can also alter my pricing so in here I'll choose for example overhead price calculation and what this will do is just recalculate everything and now we're at £25,888 and this is based on the calculation principle making a 100% profit and giving a 10% trade discount on all of the costs so if we have a look in the reports let's run a quote, uh, quantity survey report in here we can see now we have all of our costs assigned. So we have a list in this report. Let's just make this a little bit bigger. Detailing material costs, edging costs, all of the hardware from Blum, grass, Hayfully, Hetic. We also have stretchable purchase parts in the form of extrusions like aluminium rods for the Blum draw runners. We of course have our appliances and in here we now have our costs for our manufacturing. So machine setup, cutting, handling the material, cutting it and edging it and then drilling and machining and 
eventually loading the uh, loading the products up. Now, as I've said before, all of this data is supplied stock, so you would be able to edit all of this information and add in your own cost centers. So that might be assembly, painting, delivery, and so on. So now that we have our costs and we've marked them up appropriately, let's generate our quotation. So I'll go back to the header data in here. And what I'll do is I'll add in my um, image. So if you recall, I uh, saved them on my desktop and I did a few, but this is the one that the customer eventually went for, which was the Oak version. And I'll just save this and then come into my dashboard and I'll run my quotation. So here you can see we have our quotation listing out all of the products and we've got our final price. If the customer is happy, we can add this into production, send it to the production manager. And from there, we can then send out all of the appropriate machining files to the CNC. I hope the uh, video has been of interest. And if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thanks very much for watching.